Good morning, dear children. Crossing the bars, written by Alfred Bortolis. We have to study third stanza. Okay, let us start our poem. Twilight and evening bell, and after that the dark. And may there be no sadness or farewell when I embark. Twilight means a faint light at end of the day after the sun has gone down. Farewell means the act of saying goodbye to somebody. Act of saying goodbye to somebody. Embark means to get on to a ship. Get on to. Now I will explain. Get okay, twilight, the evening bell, and after that the dark. In this stanza, unlike the first stanza, where the speaker hears a clear call, where the speaker hears a clear call. Here he hears the sound of the evening bell. He hears the sound of evening bell at twilight. He hears the sound of evening bell at twilight. After twilight, there is nothing but is dark. Nothing but the dark. Here the evening bell is suggestive of the death. Evening bell is suggestive of death. Okay, you know the death. Um, after that, there is nothing but dark. Here, evening bell is suggestive of death knell. Okay, a traditional ringing of a bell. A traditional ringing of a bell to signal that a person has died. Signal that a person has died. Okay, it is a metaphor. It is a metaphor for the speaker's advanced age and impending death. Advanced age and impending death. Since his end, the speaker hopes for a cheerful departure. Hopes for a cheerful departure. But with no sadness of farewell. No sadness of farewell. No sadness of farewell. When he embarks on a new journey. No sadness of farewell. When he embarks on a new journey. Okay. Stanza 4. For though from out are born of time and place. Born means boundary. Of time and place. The friend may bear me far. That is carry me while moving. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. In the final stanza, the speaker points out the significance of his journey. The speaker points out the significance of his journey. The speaker points out the significance of his journey. He is confident that after crossing the bar, after crossing the bar, that separates the harbor and the sea. That separates the harbor and the sea. This journey would lead him far. This journey would lead him far. Beyond the limits of time and place. Beyond the limits of time and place. Beyond the limits of time and place. Where he, he would be able to see the pilot face to face. Pilot face to face. Pilot face to face. Capitalizing the first letter of the pilot, the word pilot, the poet has equated the pilot with gold. The poet was uh, uh, equated the pilot with gold, the almighty gold. But gold in the guise of a qualified mariner, qualified mariner. Who steers the ship? Who steers the ship through troubled waters in and out of the harbor? In and out of the harbor. Steers the ship in and out of the harbor. Here the speaker hopes to see. The speaker hopes to see the pilot after he has Cross the bar after he has crossed the bar. Tennyson himself has explained this by saying that the pilot had been abroad all along, abroad all along, identifying him as that divine and unseen, that divine and unseen who is always guiding us. Okay, I hope.
understood the poem now we discuss about the poetic devices poetic devices poet uses many poetic devices here the first one is uh, metaphor you know what is a metaphor it is a direct comparison of two unlike things uh, two unlike things okay examples bar that is a sand bar a ridge between the harbor and the sea the ridge between the harbor and the sea is metaphor for the boundary between life and death metaphor for the boundary bound for the boundary between life and death okay twilight and evening star evening bell twilight and evening bell both refers to time of day both twilight and evening bell refers to time of day but they are metaphor for the speakers advanced age and impending death still speakers advanced age and impending death pilot is a metaphor as stands for gold pilot metaphor stands for gold a uh, man shall meet him face to face man shall meet him face to face after death after death then next poetic device he used is the personification this figure of speech in which an inanimate object uh, is given a uh, human qualities to given inanimate object in the uh, or animals to he is given human like qualities is given human like qualities figure of speech in which an inanimate object or animals is given human like qualities example and may there be no morning of the bar and may there be no morning of the bar the bar cannot actually mourn you know bar cannot actually mourn it is an inanimate object it has been given human like qualities it has given human like qualities or life like qualities that can mourn that can mourn but such a tide as moving seas asleep other word but such another uh, example so, but such a tide as moving seas asleep child has been personified and given human like quality of being asleep human like quality of asleep okay child has given personified has been given uh, person uh, has been personified and given human like qualities of being asleep then lord tennyson uh, next one is symbolism lord tennyson has used uh, symbols to enrich okay the texture of the poem uh, examples sunset twilight and dark a meaning night imagery advanced age and impending death of the speaker impending death of the speaker clear uh, other one the next one another one clear call and evening well second one clear call and evening bell okay remains of impending death remains of impending meaning um, remains of impending then uh, next one is a bar the third one bar you know what is a bar that is sand bar you know boundary between life and death. meaning boundary between life and death life and death the next symbolism is tide tide the experience of dying experience of dying moving calmly and securely moving calmly and securely okay uh, then symbolism next one is home home earth earth okay home earth meaning earth being born again being born again being born again okay born means b o u r n e next one uh, symbolism my next symbol is born b o u r n e born boundary okay uh, the symbol next symbol is flood flood means sea flood means sea you know then uh, next symbol is far far means into the unknown that is death okay 
the last uh, one is alliteration you know what is alliteration okay the, the repetition of consonant sound at the beginning of the word okay examples the first one and one clear call for me and one clear call for me clear call c clear call the first word is c then call call c then uh, next example the, the one chew full of sound and form chew full for sound and form full f for f a form f uh, uh, f repeated here then next uh, example when that which drew when that which drew when that which drew which when uh, begin uh, the consonant sound uh, w okay uh, then for do from out our born for do from out our born for do from f f out r out r out r o then the flood may be far f f flood far the flood may be far then i hope to see my pilot face to face i hope to see my pilot face to face i hope to see my pilot face to face thank you dear have a nice day